want to welcome you this morning to the United Methodist Church of Westport and Weston. Glad to see everybody here. Um, I'm the speaker today, the preacher, uh, Jerry Eister. Um, I'm a lay, certified lay speaker. And our pastor is over with her family enjoying uh, Perry over uh, across the pond. So uh, hopefully she's having a wonderful time, certainly from the pictures she sent on Facebook, uh, that appears to be the case. So we have uh, nursery care today, if uh, anyone needs uh, 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 nursery care. And um, there are cards in the pew if anyone wants to uh, give a message to her for it for use during the prayer time. So Dennis also is helping me today with uh, parts of the service. And so uh, yeah, there you go. People at home can hear me. Yep. So I, I'm encouraged today that we are continuing with the study of the Acts. Uh, we're doing it in Bible study, we're doing it here, we're doing it in Grace Connection. And uh, the speaker that we're using on this video is a great speaker, and he has some very simple, pointed uh, points to make about the concept that Acts basically was this revolution of Christianity and how it impacted the world, starting with 12 people going to multiple millions. At any rate, please come and join us. Prelude. Please rise as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Heal me, hands of Jesus, and search out all my pain. Restore my hope 
Remove my fear and bring me peace again. Fill me, joy of Jesus, anxiety shall cease, and heavenly serenity be mine, for Jesus brings me peace. Let's sing, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. This hymn by Charles Wesley was written in honor of his conversion experience in 1738 and um, has been the first hymn in Methodist hymnals since the 1790s. Even though it's listed as hymn 57, it is the first. So please join. without succor. Let me not be afraid to defend the weak because of the fear of the strong, or afraid to defend the poor because of the anger of the rich. Show me where love and hope and faith are needed, and use me to bring them to those places. And so open my eyes and my ears that I may this coming day be able to do some work of peace for thee. Amen. God shows steadfast love and blesses us for generations to come when we walk in God's ways and serve in God's name. In love, God sent Jesus to bless and redeem the world. God forgives us our sins and restores us to new life. Let us rejoice in God's mercy and live as a free and faithful people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please share the peace of Christ among all who are here today. Peace be with you. I study Bible comments, the Bible never ignores the emotions of the moment. Here, the psalmist acknowledges the tough times that come living as a child of God, but the Bible also insists on a long-range perspective. Difficulties don't last, God's care does. From Psalm 30, verses 11 and 12. Thou hast turned me from my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. And from the New Testament, the setting of this reading, the celebration of Pentecost has come and the disciples have been infused with the Holy Spirit of God. 
So much so that Peter, a simple fisherman from the Galilee, who days before denied knowing Jesus, is seen speaking to the very large crowd. Observant pilgrims from what we know as the Middle East, Northern Africa, Syria, and parts north of Palestine flooded Jerusalem. And this was the crowd Peter inspired so much so that he would speak to again. And it is reported that many of those who heard the word believed, and they numbered 5,000. Here we see Peter and John in Jerusalem entering the temple. From Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked, alms of them. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaped up, stood, and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Amen. been through much the last few years. The COVID pandemic took a heavy toll on all of us, whether it was through sickness and loss of family or friends, or, or just the isolation, being told to stay home, don't go anywhere, the shutting down of activities, being scared to go to the grocery store, wearing masks and all. We've been through a lot. I was on a trip over to England with the bishop and other members of uh, the the individuals who are going to be ordained that year in in 2020. Just as COVID took off. And we monitored what was happening back in the States, and then there was an announcement. They were going to shut down air flights from England to America. So we had to cut short our trip, scramble to get tickets on planes to fly back, and on that trip I never made it past Ox- well, Oxford, The basically seeing uh, part of the Wesley story. We never made it to London. That trip was special for me because over the previous couple years, I had had a lot of physical difficulties. I had had a knee replaced and uh, had some other things going on. And this was the first time that I felt strong enough to travel, to go somewhere. And then what happens is the world shuts down. So over the last number of years, I've had other difficulties 
that I've struggled with. My wife of 30 years this week has Alzheimer's. She's been in long-term care since 2019. She doesn't know who I am or anything what's going on. She's actually now in hospice and uh, you know, basically she lives totally dependent on the nursing staff for everything in her life that she has. I had a hip replacement a year ago, um, and I still have, as you can probably tell, a little bit of balance problems, and I spend too much time at physical therapy with a physical therapist. Um, it, it, it is just a struggle. But things are getting better. I'm getting healthier. Supportive times are ahead. And I truly believe what the psalmist wrote. Thou turn my mourning into dancing and girded me with gladness. Our United Methodist Church has been going through a period of catharsis in the last few years. Division. 25% of the churches in the United Methodist Church in, in America have split away. Low attendance. We're not back to where we had before, particularly in terms of the younger part of the population. Low giving, low energy. Our leaders and members are tired. They're tired of what has been going on. They're tired of where we are. We're tired. We're tired of what we see ahead. But the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.5 5, saying, walk by faith, not by sight. And now I say, isn't it time for us to take a leap of faith and start walking by faith and not by sight? Our bishop, Thomas Bickerton, is calling for the United Methodist Church to reclaim our role as God's people. To reclaim. Come back to that to revive our energy and renew our callings. Our churches are much like the disabled man at the gate of the temple, unable to fully participate in his life. They're asking for alms, asking for help, but unable to fully participate, to enjoy his life. And what did Peter say to him when he was asked for alms? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And if you remember the last verse of the hymn we started with, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues, Charles Wesley used various biblical passages, and the last words were about leaping and praising God. Swiss psychologist Carl Jung coined the words extrovert and introvert. The definition of an extrovert is someone who gets energy being out in a crowd with other social activities. That's how an, an extrovert gets energy and can keep going and going because being with people is part of how 
they get energized. An introvert is someone whose the batteries run down when they're out in social occasions and need to go home or somewhere and just relax and be quiet and be away from people to restore and recharge. So I ask, how do we recharge? How do we get more energy? John Wesley lived a life of considerable activity and found energy through his belief in loving God and loving neighbor. Just a constant activity day after day, year after year. At his funeral, his friend John Whitehead eulogized him as follows. The industry of Mr. Wesley was almost incredible. From four o'clock in the morning till eight or nine at night, his time was employed in reading, writing, preaching, meeting with people, visiting the sick, and traveling. He usually traveled on horseback and would sometimes ride 30, 40, or 50 miles in a day and preach two, three, and sometimes four sermons. We consider the whole of his labors, if we consider the whole of his labors, the and compare them to what a normal individual does. He, we may say he has lived life two or three times over. Where did that energy come from? What gave him the ability to go on and carry out that schedule? John Wesley's last words were, best of all is, God is with us. Does that sound familiar? There's a psalm, the 23rd psalm, that has a line, yea, though I walk in the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou for thou art with me. As usual, Wesley knew his Bible quite well and would often use quotations from the Bible. And on his deathbed, he was using, thou art with me. That was how he dealt with crisis. It was through his love of God and love of neighbor. He taught his followers that that was the ultimate activity, love. And it was that love that energized Wesley. And it is that love that is available to us to find energy, to find a new way. Overarching love generated energy for John Wesley. It powered him. Love, love of God, love of neighbor is what we need. Is it time? Is it time to reclaim for us in the church and all the churches in Methodism? Reclaim our role as God's people. Is it our time to revive our energy, our level of activity of what we need to do? Is it time to renew our calling, what God is asking of us, what we need to be doing? Is it time? Is it time to let our leap of faith be a leap of joy towards being all love. Amen.
these join in singing we shall overcome verses one two and five
Heavenly Father, we present our gifts to you to support your ministry, spread your word, and touch lives. As we heard from Acts, we may not be able to cure a crippled man, but we can greet all whom we encounter with kindness and courtesy. Give us the strength to live by your word in a difficult and complicated world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we come to a time of prayer together, I'm gonna ask that uh, Bob walks over to you with a microphone if you'd like to share something so that I can actually hear what you're saying <laughs> up here uh, and find a way to include it this morning. Are there those out there that would like to share? Uh, yes, I, <clears throat> I'd like to see prayers for the Middle East. This morning the news was that Iran did uh, attack Israel with hundreds of drones and missiles. Uh, it just seems to get almost worse day by day. Hopefully it'll change that tra trajectory. Are there others? Thank you, Don, um, for sharing. That was difficult news for us to wake up to this morning, I guess. <clears throat> Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Here in this place, we come to praise and worship you, Lord. We ask that you quiet our minds amid the confusion we see in our world today. When we feel we cannot make it through the day alone, comfort us and make us know you are with us. God, we ask your touch to be felt by those who feel insecure due to medical conditions and need lifting up. We should be aware of the 27 names that are on our prayer list this week. I'm gonna read just the first names. Brad, Jerry, JC, Norma, Sarah, another Sarah, Vicki, Dwayne, Dana, Michael, Glenn, Mary, another Mary, Mark, another Mark, Another Mark, Angie, Tony, Eileen, Catherine, Tom, Janet, Dawn, Scott, Allison, Melda, Reverend Chung's wife, Mae Young, and Reverend Karen, who will be with us next week. For Joan Eister and Phil Richards in hospice care. May we all feel safe, loved, and at home wherever we are, knowing you are with us always. God, we see your reflection when we take a moment to be present. <clears throat> we see you in the eyes of a child as there is joy, there is laughter, there is hope, there is trust. There is a chance to shape the future in the eyes of a child. For the lessons of life, there's no better teacher than for us to look into the eyes of a child. We are grateful for your blessings as a growing family, certainly for grandchildren, for the Brummett's granddaughter, 
for the Trinka's grandson new to us this week, this last week. God, our desire is a constant challenge in life. Help us to know the difference between what we want and what we need. Let us always be grateful for the blessings you provide. Guide us to offer and to share our blessings with those in need. As the scripture said, may we be confident that you are always there to take us by our hand and raise us up, that we may sing and dance with joy, praising you always. May your Holy Spirit fill us that we may live a life of abundant love and of wonder. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And please rise if you are able, and join in singing the closing hymn. be great when we take our leap of faith. May it be a leap of joy towards being all love by loving God and neighbor. God will turn our mourning into dancing. God will gird us with gladness. O oh Lord our God, May we sing your praise and give you thanks forever. Go in peace. Amen.